Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to go through the orthogonal drawing method as a bit of a refresher. Um, obviously you can fast forward and go at your own pace and pause if you need to. I'm going to insert a little image in the top right corner now of the 3D design that I'll be converting into an orthogonal. Now with this design, there's no measurements provided, but considering it's kind of cube-like in its structure, as long as the width, depth and height are all equal, this design should be pretty straightforward. I think if you make them all five centimeters, that'd be a good way to start. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So I'm going to start with my standard orthogonal layout. To begin with, I'm going to draw a baseline as a reference. So I'm going to draw just a line across the middle of my page like so. I'm going to start with my front view. My front view is going to be five centimeters. So I'm just going to mark that on the page. So five centimeters like so. I'm then going to rule directly up, probably for about 10 to 15 centimeters, like so. Directly up. And I'm gonna do the same with this line as well. And this is just gonna help me set up my page for later views that I need to do. So, like I said, I'm gonna make sure that my front view is five centimeters wide and five centimeters high, so using my ruler, I'm going to measure five centimeters like so and then I'm going to directly connect it across so at this point I've got a five by five centimeter square and then I need to start filling in the details of that 3d design so I can see there's a a bit of a ridge about halfway up so I'm going to measure about two and a half centimeters obviously you guys can feel free to make up the measurements for this design but again as long as they're consistent then it shouldn't matter too much. I'm gonna measure two and a half across as well. I'm gonna go down about half a centimeter. And then I'm gonna measure along this line about one centimeter with my ruler. And then I'm gonna connect this point and that point together with a pretty solid line. Great, so you can see I'm starting to form that front part on the design that you can see in the top right. I'm then gonna connect this line all the way to the top because I can see from this view that um, it is the same width, it's consistent. And I can see that there is a slant that goes down about this far, but we've got to remember that there's a little face right here from our 3D object. And again, the measurements aren't necessarily perfect, but as long as they're consistent across all designs. Now we can see on that 3D um, object that there is a gap that we can't see on our front view. So we've got to remember that when we can't see something, we need to um, depict it using dotted lines, which are used for hidden lines. So I'm gonna use these little dashes till about here. And I'm gonna extend this diagonal with a dash line as well to their connect. So that there symbolizes that there is a space in there that I can't see from the front view, but but there is something behind there. So that needs to be done. What I need to remember with an orthogonal is that once I've done my front view, I then need to do my top view. And we've got to make sure that the spacing between all our views are consistent. So I'm going to make sure that there is a three centimeter gap between the top and front view, as well as the side view, three centimeters. I'm going to measure that from now as well. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to make sure that I create a five by five cube. So that's five across. I'm gonna measure five centimeters up along this line. I can do the same on the other line if you wanna keep it nice and accurate. And then simply connect the points. Like so. Cool, so now I have the space where I can put my top view. And what I'm gonna to do to make the construction of it easier, I'm gonna use the vertical lines on my front view and just extend them or project them upwards. So I'm gonna take this line here and really lightly project it upwards and do the same for this one here. And lightly project it upwards. And you can see I've left a little bit of a gap here between the projection line and the actual view. And that's really something that we wanna keep consistent across all our drawings to keep it really nice and clean and accurate. So that's part of my top view done. Now I need to actually form the ridges and the other little um, parts of that object. So again, you guys can make up these measurements as long as they're consistent across your views. My top view, I'm gonna make this front ridge about that high and wide. And I'm gonna bold up the lines 
that I'm going to keep consistent. I'm going to make this top ridge here all the way across about that wide like so. And then I'm going to bold up the lines that I actually need to keep. So I'm going to go around and the top view is pretty much done once you've completed that. Obviously you'll go back later and you'll rub out certain lines as well. A good method for completing an orthogonal is to also color in the platforms or the sides on the 3D drawing to make sure you understand what you need to include on that view. Now that I've got my, uh, my top and my front view, I simply need to extend these horizontal lines across like so. Again, it doesn't matter how far you project them for now, you can always erase them later. And I'm gonna do the same for the, this part of my front view as well. What I need to do is if you had access to a 45 degree set square like this, you would take from this corner and create a perfect 45 degree line like that. But a lot of you won't have access to this, so what you could do instead is you could use a protractor or if you have your measurements for your side view ready to go, what you do is you factor in the fact that there's a three centimeter gap, so one, two, three, and then you factor in the fact that you know it's five centimeters wide because it's a cube. So three, and another five. So what you need to then need to do is take this point and connect it to this point. And that line there should be a perfect 45 degree line without you needing to have used a protractor or a set square. And that's fantastic. So what we have to remember with projection lines is that when this line interacts with this 45 degree line, we then have to take it directly down. So I'm gonna project all these horizontal lines from my top view for a total of four. There'll be four horizontal lines, as we can see, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to project them downwards. So when they hit that 45 degree line, they need to go down. So that one's gonna go down there. That one's gonna go down there. This one here. And then finally that one there. And the good thing about working this way, guys, is it means we don't have to do actually too much measuring on our side view because all the measurements have done for us on the other views. To then form the rest of this side view, I need to take my horizontal lines from my front view. So I take this line here and I'll project it lightly across. Again, factoring that there's gonna be no lines drawn in this space here, I'm gonna start the lines there. And then I'm gonna take this horizontal line like so, really lightly drawing that. I'm gonna take this corner because I think it's an important part of the drawing, it's a piece of visual information. Again, we might not bold up that line, but it needs to be there as a reference. And then finally, this one here, this end of this slope. So I'm gonna draw a horizontal line across, like so. Now what you could do is you could use a couple of methods to get this design done. You could freehand it first because we've got this kind of grid that we've created, or you can use your rule and be really accurate. I'm gonna go freehand first and then go over it to make it a little bit more accurate. We can see from the 3D drawing, there's a really clear slant on our design. It starts here and ends up here. So I know it ends here based on my top view. So that right there, and this line is my slant. And I'm gonna connect it to where it ends here, which is this point. So really lightly and freehand, I'm going to draw that slant. I then know that it actually ends on this point here and this is that front shape that we can see on our 3D object. I then know that this column extends all the way down as well. And as you can see, I'm doing it freehand, but I can always go over it later. And we can see that here, that the gap actually ends up here. That's where the line needs to be. So that line I will go over, this line I'll go over, and then this point here creates a solid line on our side view as well. So now that I've kind of structured it all out really lightly, I can go over with my pencil like so to make sure that my line work is accurate and consistent and clean. So we don't always have to do clean design work, of course, but when we're designing using technical drawing methods like the orthogonal or isometric drawing method, we need to consider our line work, our accuracy, and our layout, that's really, really important. So I'm bolding up all the lines that I need to. 
and we can see that our top front and side view have now been formed. What I would then do last is underneath, leave probably a half a centimeter gap. I will label my views top, front, and side. I could then clean up all my line work to be really consistent and then we will end up looking something like this. So we can see that on this final product, there is a little gap between our projection lines and our actual view. I'll try and bring that a bit closer to the camera for you. So we can see that tiny little gap left here between the projection line and the actual view, as well as the fact that I've erased lines within this space to leave it nice and clean, same as in this space as well. We have to imagine this kind of imaginary boundary around these views and the projection lines don't go through that. Okay, so I hope that video was helpful guys. Hopefully you followed it along and you can apply that method to future designs. Good luck.